The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. A chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. A few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supply worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and use promo code WATER to get 10% off their entire family of incredible products. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139. This is Scottish John for Infowars.com. I know that most of you here in this commercial already know about the New World Order, eugenics, and all the other issues covered here at Infowars. The question is, do your friends and family know? If not, then I want to know why. Oh, I know it's tough to talk about this with some people. They might call you names, or they just want to talk about sports or soap operas. I say, so what? There's a battle going on out there right now. The ammunition is information, and the soldiers are you. It's time to transform your game from passive listening to active participant. We from Scotland have had our skin in this game for the greater part of the last thousand years and I'm still fighting. If we don't all stand up right now, we're going to lose everything. The Infowar is worldwide. Tell your friends about Infowars and let them know that Infowars doesn't print bull. It's real journalism and news backed up by documented fact. Step up and take your friends and family to Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.tv and PlanetInfowars.com. The truth will set them free. I don't know what it is. Ralph just won't pay any attention to me. When he comes home from work, all he ever does is play video games and go to sleep. It's like I don't even exist. Oh, Betty, that's just awful. Does this seem familiar? If the answer to this question is yes, then listen carefully. Toxic pesticides, GMO foods and additives, BPA plastics, contaminated water supplies. Many of these toxic additives are deliberately engineered to attack and weaken human masculinity. It's part of the eugenics population control movement. Look it up. If men are more interested in online gaming than they are in their wives. A serious population crisis is soon to follow. Energize the man in your life with super male vitality from InfoWarsLife.com. It's designed to aid the body in ways that help invigorate your natural systems without artificial testosterone, completely free of GMOs, harmful additives, gluten, and is made right here in the USA. Get your super male vitality right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. Live from the InfoWars.com studios, it's Alex Jones. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. Alex is going to be joining us in the next hour. He wants to talk about these amazing stories that are up on InfoWars about a new law in Michigan mandating that the if any time you take your child to the doctor, they're going to have a private consultation where the parents are not allowed to be present. The parents aren't allowed to know what's being discussed. And that's going to happen whether you like it or not. As well, as we see on the other spectrum, a sheriff in Tennessee who is given a request for information because a journalist who runs an organization reporting on prisons believes that there's some maltreatment of the prisoners going on there. So he files a Freedom of Information uh, request. And he's the one who gets investigated. Of course, the request is denied, but he's investigated. Now, this half hour of the Alex Jones Show is brought to you by My Patriot Supply. Just as we are telling you that you need to get prepared to take care of your own life so that you don't get caught up in this government surveillance system that healthcare is now becoming. Patriots everywhere are getting prepared. And they're doing it with one of my favorite companies, My Patriot Supply. Com. MyPatriotSupply.com offers high-quality survival gear and is the home of the Patriot Pantry line of emergency food storage. The food is delicious, easy to prepare, put together with GMO-free crops, 
Storable for up to 25 years, and it's developed with space-saving and secure food storage bins, unlike flimsy plastic pails that you find almost everywhere else. Visit MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex today for special offers. That's MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex. The globalists are counting on you to be unprepared. Fight back. Get prepared at MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex today. Now, as I was just mentioning, this is the 70th anniversary of D-Day. Uh, CNN had a story of a veteran named uh, Jim Pee Wee Martin. He's 93 years old. He jumped when he was just 23 into that gunfire. He said it was a lot easier parachuting in at 93 onto Normandy Beach because nobody was shooting at him. But this is what else he had to say. He said, everybody was scared all the time. If they tell you anything differently, they're full of crap. But you just do what you had to do regardless. He said, that's the difference. That's the difference. You do what you had to do. And we had a story earlier about a young man who stopped the shooting at a Christian school in Seattle. He jumped the gunman. All he had was pepper spray. He had to wait until the gunman was reloading because he didn't have a firearm. But he took it upon himself to stop this guy who was shooting at innocent civilians. We still have heroes in America. But... Obama is in is on Normandy and he's talking about the veterans praising the veterans as he should but doesn't it ring hollow when he does it as we've seen this week with Bergdahl as it's come out that many uh, servicemen who were in Afghanistan died looking for this guy who deserted as people are now saying he declared jihad that he voluntarily went over to them he was with them for five years they're now trying to back out of the situation where it's a clear situation where they violated the exact letter of the law about 30-day notice. They're trying to back out of that and say that they did it for his health. But Obama is there. He's there with other European leaders. And as we see, NATO and Europe and America are now pushing to start a new Cold War with what's going on in the Ukraine. They may even start a third world war. And then there's the VA scandal. It just came out today that the acting VA secretary said that 18 vets in a Phoenix hospital died while they're on a waiting list. 18. And further in the article, it says that investigators have concluded that up to 1,700 veterans had been placed on a so-called secret list, quote unquote. And they weren't even in line for medical appointments that they had requested. In other words, these people think they're going to get health care. They've been put on a secret list and they're not even on any list. They're going to just sit there forever. It kind of sounds like Obamacare, doesn't it? Where you go to this uh, malfunctioning website, you think you sign up, and then when you go to get health care, you find that you're not signed up, that this thing didn't work. When we look at what happened with the World War II vets, you know, there's a very, very important story that we need to remember that happened in Tennessee. We just see this uh, story out of Tennessee where the sheriff is now calling Homeland Security on anybody who investigates his wrongdoing. And there was corruption in Tennessee as some of these veterans came back from World War II. It's something called the Battle of Athens. And Leanne McAdoo did a special report on this last night on the Nightly News. And it gives you an insight into why Homeland Security and others who are trying to operate this secret surveillance police state are so afraid of veterans. Here's that report. The Battle of Athens, Tennessee is not only a pristine example of the fight for democracy and freedom, but it's also an example of maybe why the government sees returning veterans as a threat. A town infested with corrupt cops turned politicians who were lining their pockets by doling out tickets was turned upside down by some 3,000 veterans returning from World War II. The self-described wild vets became the target of law enforcement who made a habit of picking up GIs and fining them heavily for just about anything. As election season approached, some of the returning veterans resolved to challenge the existing political monopoly by fielding their own nonpartisan candidates and working for a fraud-free election. The GI candidates promised an honest ballot count and reform of county government. But on election day, a town normally patrolled by just 15 deputies was swarmed with almost 200 armed deputies who turned up to patrol the precincts. Conflicts, of course, arose during polling, and a black man was shot in the back while trying to escape an officer assault. And when the polls closed, deputies seized the ballot boxes and took them to the jail. Opposition veterans responded by arming themselves and marching to the jail. In the end, 
The door of the jail was dynamited and breached. The barricaded deputies surrendered and the ballot boxes were recovered. And the recouped ballots certified the election of the five GI nonpartisan league candidates. Now, in the present day, not only do we face rampant election fraud, what with you know, e-voting and millions miraculously rising from the dead to cast their vote for President Obama. But the Battle of Athens also demonstrates how veterans are fearless. I mean, they've already stared right into the face of evil during battle. So they're not going to be afraid to stand up to tyranny when they return to the states. And this is what makes them enemy number one to a government that is hell-bent on totalitarianism. A controversial Department of Homeland Security assessment from 2009 lists returning veterans among terrorist risks to the U.S. A Morgan County, Indiana police sergeant recently admitted that the increasing militarization of domestic police departments is partly to deal with returning veterans who are now seen as a homegrown terror threat. Tanks, guns, armor, all tried and tested on the battlefield. Now some of it is here in central Indiana on our streets being used to keep us safe. Plus you have a lot of people that are coming out of the military that have the ability and the knowledge to, to build IEDs and, and to defeat law enforcement techniques. During the standoff between cattle rancher Cliven Bundy and the Bureau of Land Management, the majority of the militia that rallied to Bundy's side were veterans. And while the mainstream media tried to paint the militia as lawless and intimidating, residents of Nevada who witnessed the exchange expressed their support for the militia who did the job their sheriff failed to do. That is bull crap. Those are my children and this is my community. And if Metro does not have the guts to come out and protect us, what are you here for? What do we pay you guys for? I want to tell every one of the militia, thank you, because not one of our government officials, not one of our sheriffs or a metro would have saved us that day. They didn't save us that day. And the government's disdain for veterans is evident in the sorry state at Veterans Affairs. The Phoenix Healthcare Center was busted, creating secret waiting lists that amounted to little more than death panels for 40 veterans. 1,700 vets there were never even placed on a list at all, rather left to suffer indefinitely. And now 42 VA centers across the country are under investigation for possible abuse of scheduling practices, indicating the vast scope of contempt facing returning soldiers. So imagine the betrayal felt by veterans when they learned that the Obama administration had traded five top Taliban commanders in exchange for one army sergeant, considered by some to be a deserter, and whose attempted rescue on multiple occasions cost soldiers their lives. But rather than get caught up in the mass distraction that is this prisoner exchange, stay focused on the real issue. Our government wants to paint veterans as America's next terror threat. These are men and women who took an oath to protect the United States of America, even if it cost them their lives. Why are they the threat? Because they're threatening you or me? No. It's because veterans have been trained to take down America's enemies. And the shadow government that's now running this country is the real enemy number one. Veterans, your skills and knowledge will take down the shadow government, and they know it. But don't play directly into the government's hand by allowing yourselves to be manipulated into a self-fulfilling prophecy of extremism. Instead, soldier up for the info war. Great report from Leanne McAdoo. That's the sort of thing you can see at Prison Planet TV on a nightly basis. We hope that you'll support that by becoming a subscriber. If you become a subscriber, you can share that subscription with up to 10 other people who can simultaneously watch the news every night, as well as special reports, as well as all of Alex's documentaries. And there's quite a few of them. So it's a great way to wake up your friends and family. It's a great way to support our operation here. Now I'm joined with Anthony Gucciardi here in the studio. Anthony, it's pretty amazing, isn't it, that uh, we see the veterans so poorly treated. We see them being experimented on. We see them uh, going to veterans hospitals being told that they're on a waiting list to get health care and yet they're on this secret waiting list listen to this uh, before you comment columbia missouri 19 were on a secret waiting list st louis 26 kansas city 37 wichita 20 and phoenix the big one 1700 were on a secret waiting list they thought they were on a waiting list to get health care they're just uh there i'll write your name down and make you feel good and just shove you off to the side and some of these people have died 18 in phoenix died waiting for treatment because they put them on these secret lists. That's the kind of treatment that people who have pledged to support the government get 
from the the people that they're pledged to support they really need like these vets uh who who 